Last week's episode, Lara, I told a joke and you weren't too impressed. So I put a lot more effort into this one. It's a lot a bit more highbrow. Okay. What do you call a dog that's into mindfulness and meditation? A dog that meditates. I do not know, Guyton. And a werewolf. Huh. <laughs> Actually, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, it's still a dad joke, but um, I can live with that. Yeah. Well, I thought, seeing as this is the last episode of the series, I should put a bit more effort into it. Well, speaking of this week's show, we have saved some of the great stuff till last. There's usual fun, but of course, there's also plenty of tips for you and your pooch. And I promise no more um, bad jokes will be there. Well, maybe one or two might sneak in. Oh, well, let's hope they improve, because poor Georgie boy there, he's just looking a bit embarrassed by his dad. Well, this is his happy face. And his proud face, and okay. well, that's his sad face. They're very similar. <laughs> Hard to tell the difference. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd say embarrassed still. So many Australian households now have multiple dogs in there. It's really important when we bring a new dog home that we make sure we do it right. Now, Trish, you're a bit of an expert on this. You've even written a book about it. What are some handy tips that we should know? Yeah, so it's important for owners that are considering introducing a new dog into their house so that they uh, prepare for the for the arrival of the mm -hmm. new dog. So the things to establish are the rules and boundaries. Okay. So establishing which rooms or you know dogs are allowed into or not allowed into. You know, establishing the sleeping areas where they're going to be sleeping, and of course, eating areas. Areas and where they're going to be eating as well. So they're things that are really important to establish before you bring the new dog home. Okay, and so what are some of the best ways that we could introduce a new dog into the home? The best way we recommend is taking the dogs for a walk first. So anywhere off the, off the new, on neutral ground is the best okay. place. So taking them for a walk, 20, 40 minutes, and then once they've established there, then they can go to a park, have a bit of a play, yep. and then taking them home from there. Okay, now you two, are you listening closely? Resource guarding is a big thing. Um, often we think it's just food and toys, but it's a lot more than that, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so the resources aren't just food and toys. The biggest resource is actually us and what comes from us as yes. well. So we need to be mindful to control and manage those things mm -hmm. so that dogs don't fight over those resources. And what happens if dogs do start having little niggles? Is that a problem? No, minor squabbles is normal yep. and it's quite fine, especially if you can quickly break up the, the squabble without mm -hmm. too much issue. Yep. The problems start when the fights become more frequent yes. and, of course, increase in intensity as well. Okay. That's really when you need to seek the services of a professional. Okay, because they're not going to get better, are they, if they're left unattended? No, the fights can actually get really bad, and I've actually seen dogs that people can't bring them into the same area anymore. Um, and that's quite severe, so you don't want to let it get to that point. So we do certainly recommend seeking the services of a trainer that can come and help you if you start to see an escalation in frequency and intensity. Yeah, absolutely, because we want to make sure that we have a happy home for both the human and our canine friends. Does your little mate like to leave presents around the house? There's many reasons why dogs like to poo and wee in our humble homes. Annika, can you tell me why this might happen? Yes, sure, this is a bit annoying, but there are, some of the reasons include, you could have a puppy, so they're learning where to go. Um, an incontinent dog, because of ageing, yep. so like us, they suffer that. But anxiety is another cause, and sometimes um, the animals are trying to send us a message that they're a little bit annoyed about something, perhaps. Um, and I also think that sometimes it's because we inappropriately um, show them attention when we are cleaning up and they get a bit confused by that message. Right, so what kind of products does Rivers & Coco have to kind of help us deal with these situations? Oh, look, we've got some fantastic products. So the first one is Wee Away. Now, this isn't just for the urine. This is also for um, faeces and vomit. Uh -huh. So great things to talk about on a Saturday afternoon. Love it. <laughs> but what's really important, we talked before about how they go back to the same spot to resoil or mark the spot. And that's because if you don't actually use something that contains enzymes, which this product does, a naturally based enzyme, to dissolve those uric acid crystals, they can detect where they went the last time and they go back there. Right. So this product is 100% natural and it's also apple scented. So it has a really nice smell. Delicious. Um, then the other product that we have, which is a toilet training aid, is called Pee Here. This is a fantastic attractant. It has an organic compound which um, has pheromones in it. It's a big uh -huh. word, pheromones. Yep. And uh, basically that attracts them to the area. So you can use this indoors, you can use it outdoors. But one thing that you do when you have a puppy is, or even an incontinent dog, is you can use our posh pee pads. Mm -hmm. So gone are the days of needing to put something on the floor that looks like a nappy. <laughs> um, these are much more um, camouflaged, if you like, to the floor. Hold up to two cups of urine. Wow. Yes, they have antibacterial properties because 
just the charcoal that's infused inside. They're really fantastic. Absolutely. And so what you can also do is use this product and put a few drops onto it, which will attract the animal to the area. So we away, pee here, and the posh pee pads. Fantastic products from Rufus and Coco, guaranteed to get your puppy peeing outside. Thanks very much, Annika. Thank you. <laughs>the past few years, humans and dogs have become so close that they're now considered a very important part of the family. This rise of the fur kid means we're spending significantly more on them than ever before as we align their lifestyles more closely to ours and we seek out products and services that will help to enhance their quality of life. Kate, you work with dogs every day. How do they know what we're feeling? The human-dog relationship has been one of our longest lasting, thousands of years, even hundreds of thousands of years. They are very in tune to our body language and what, what our intention is in changing our body language. And so that's how they can see whether we're happy or sad? It's Absolutely. It's, really... it's subtle changes. Things that we ourselves are not very good at doing. Dogs actually read human body language far, far better than we read human body language. Given their knack of knowing what we feel, dogs are also playing a growing role in assisting people with anxiety or depression and even post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, dogs make wonderful companions and when we come in the door every day, they're the first ones to greet us and they make us feel special as we are the most important things in their lives. And when we touch and interact with our dogs and pat them, it doesn't matter what sort of day we've had or how bad it's been, it straight away makes us feel happy. And as we pat and stroke our dogs, it's actually a form of meditation called mindfulness, which is actually a way we help to cope with stress and anxiety in our lives. The other aspect is dogs get us outside, like days like this in the sunshine. Beautiful. And sunshine is really critical for our vitamin D because it activates the genes that produce serotonin and dopamine in our bodies, which make us feel good. Ah, so taking your dog out for a walk is clearly going to make you feel good and giving them a big hug as well. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We, we forget everything that's happened in our day and we just feel good about ourselves. Oh my gorgeous. <laughs> We've become so close to our dogs, it's no wonder we want to spoil them. Yet three out of four people still don't have pet insurance. This could affect the whole family should something unexpected happen. So to make sure that you and your best mate are covered, visit hif.com.au. Becoming a pet in a house mind with Porsche is a great way to earn some extra money that has a whole lot of other benefits as well. I'm with Claudia, you're registered with Porsche as a, a house sitter. Yeah. How did, and why did you get into this? Well, uh, when I moved out of home, I really missed having my pets around and I saw Porsche advertised, so I thought I'd give it a go. So basically it allows me to visit other people's houses and hang out with their pets. Um, so yeah, it's really good for me and them. And what do you love most about it? I think just the variety of different dogs that I get to meet, it gives me a bit of a trial of different breeds yes. um, and also just visiting some really nice houses. Oh, cool. Yeah. And and what's the process then? Like, do you, does it feel weird going to someone's home? Um, not really. I've been really lucky with my pet owners, um, but there is, you know, a nice little process where you go first to have a meet and greet. So you mm -hmm. just get to know them. Um, so that can give you a bit of an idea. Yes. Um, and then after that, they just book you and you can develop a good ongoing relationship. Yeah, look, it is a great way. I know when I did it for a while, it is an awesome way when you, you know, want to try new places and you get to stay in some really nice homes as well, don't you, sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> now, what's been your experience with Poor Shake? Um, really good. It's really easy. Basically, you just develop a profile. Mm -hmm. um, so it might take a little while to get up and running, but once you start getting a few requests, then it all pretty much goes from there. People can just send you a booking request and that includes, so and included in that um, is insurance. Okay. So it's for good. peace of mind for the owner as well. So mm. if anything goes wrong with um, their loved one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all sort of covered. So yeah. Oh, lovely. And do you develop a bit of a relationship with the little doggies? I do. Um, yeah, some that I've had who are um, repeat visitors especially, yeah. And But I always feel a bit sad when I leave. That's probably the worst part about it. <laughs> yeah, look, and I yeah. tell you, when they sometimes they move overseas too and that's really mm. sad. <laughs> I've had that happen a little bit as well. Yeah. But um, I think that sounds really awesome and particularly because I've got to go away this weekend, Claudia. So are you free? I think so. <laughs> awesome. I better get on Porsche and uh, look up your profile. Sounds good. Great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with Diego and Adelaide, the French bulldog. Oh, hi, how are you? Hello, Adelaide. You are a gorgeous girl. Now, Adelaide's, um, how old is she? She's almost four. Four. So she's been on Instagram since her pup? Pretty much, yes. So she's one of the early Instas. 
Uh, you could say that, yes. One of the trailblazers of uh, the famous pooches of Instagram. Yes. So Adelaide's got followers all over the world. She does. She, um, I guess the most famous one will be a German princess. Uh, but yes, we do keep in touch with people all over the world. That's fantastic, hanging out with the royals. Yes. What's it like having a puppy that's more famous than you are? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's taking a hit. Um, <laughs> my ego's taking a hit, but uh, yeah, no, it's, um, I can live with it. Do you feel like a bit of a stage mum? You know, uh, taking yes, the puppy she's my baby. She, to the she, dog shows and, and being a brand ambassador. Uh, yeah, she's, look, she's really my baby. And, <laughs> yeah, she's, um, I'll do anything for her. Oh, well, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, Adelaide. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in some very pretty collars in the future. Thanks very much, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> Just like us, dogs can suffer from allergies and food intolerances. Chris, what are some of the reactions that dogs can get? Yeah, some of the, the common ailments that you'll see is the constant itching and mm -hmm. scratching, um, licking and chewing of their feet. Um, and even to the extreme cases where we might get a, some vomiting and diarrhea. Yes. Mm. And, and what is it that's causing this, do you think, mostly? Depending on what they've currently been mm. fed. You know, if, they're, if they've been on a, a manufactured diet, processed diet, Moving across to a raw food diet, you will um, probably nine times out of 10 fix this, these conditions. Because what we're doing is we're stimulating their immune system first and foremost. Um, when they're coming back from a manufactured diet, the, the immune system has been suppressed. So just two weeks on, on a raw food diet, you really will see changes and a lot of these little allergy symptoms or whatever will go away. Okay, what if they are on a raw food diet already, so they're having beef and chicken in your range and then they start to react to this, can that happen? Yeah, absolutely, and, and those two proteins are, are the most common mm -hmm. proteins that uh, there is an allergic reaction to. So in our core range, we do have those two proteins blended in each one. So if that's the case, and even some of our users that are finding those sort of issues, it might be advantageous to move across to our allergy range, which is a turkey and a kangaroo. And they're species-specific range, so mm -hmm. the, the muscle meat, the crushed bone, and the offal content, which will be your livers, kidneys, and hearts, are all derived from that particular animal. Why are they different? Like, why is kangaroo better than beef or chicken, I guess, when it starts to come to allergies? Yeah, well, the beef and chicken, it, it just is it's the most popular. Yeah. So with our allergy range, we've just stayed right away from those two mm -hmm. proteins. But something like kangaroo is wild game meat. Mm. So they're not exposed to some of the other chemicals, yes. uh, pesticides and all those sort of things that, mm. that, that can find their way into the food chain. Okay. Um, so we can stay away from those for the kangaroo. And the turkey, it, look, it's very similar to you know, chicken processing and that as mm -hmm. well, but we've just seen where there doesn't seem to be issue with turkey. So that's the other reason why we went the other way with turkey. So there's, there's really a red meat and white meat there for them. Okay. And if, you know, if people are trying all of this with their food, but they're still finding some um, issues going on there, what would you recommend that they do? Um, well, uh, definitely um, go to a raw diet as yes. quick as possible. Yes. Uh, but give, allow two weeks, be patient. Okay. Um, and it might get worse before it gets better to tell the truth. Okay. Um, it might bring that out mm -hmm. and, and, and move it on quite, quite quickly. But, you know, really allow yourself about two weeks, but get away from any of that processed food, mm. any of those processed treats, um, and just give them that raw diet uh, and allow some time. Okay, so just get back to basics. Get back to basics. <laughs> if you think that your dog might be suffering some food allergies, well, check out the Big Dog website and get some tips from there. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. How come you get the bigger room? Well, Lara, there's some big mysteries in this world, and that's one of them. Hey, you want to take your pet? I am. We keep featuring all these dog-friendly destinations, mm -hmm. so... I thought I'd book a little holiday for George and I. Oh, that's nice. Where are you thinking of going? Somewhere with a beach. I like fishing. All right. Well, New South Wales have got beautiful beaches, so why don't you type that in and then you pick pet-friendly accommodation? They do. New South Wales. Yep. And then I go to this drop-down menu. Mm-hmm. Voila. Pet-friendly accommodation. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, because I'm fishing, George is going to want to come along too. He likes to do about 10 laps of the beach and <laughs> dig about 10 holes. So... Oh, here we go, pet-friendly beaches. Yep, and parks. You can find all the pet-friendly areas around you. It's the, Australia's biggest pet-friendly database, in sure fact. Sure is. Now, fishing, I develop a bit of an appetite, mm -hmm. and digging holes, George gets hungry too. So pet-friendly cafe, there we go. It's all there, everything the you need. They've all got reviews as well. This one's got four stars. Yeah, you can do a review. You can put on photos. You can uh, even become a travel blogger if you like. George doesn't mind taking a photo. 
we could start his blogging career right here. Oh, budding blogger. <laughs> <laughs> Take your pet. All right, I am going to go and pack. Awesome. Well, if you're going to take a holiday, Darcy and I might find a holiday. And we're going to book the bigger room. With Big Four Holiday Parks, you don't have to be in the doghouse with your four-legged friend, as they recognise that for many guests, their pooch is just another member of the family. With 88 pet-friendly parks to choose from and the flexibility to choose from a range of camping, caravan and self-contained holiday destinations across the country, it's easy to find the ideal place to park up the van or pitch the tent with your furry friend in tow. To find the right destination to suit your needs, visit big4.com.au and look for the dog's welcome icon next to the park listings. If you're heading to Sydney, then look no further than Lamont Hotel. This is a premier boutique hotel in Potts Point and a natural choice for business or pleasure. With eight dog-friendly terrace rooms, your pooch will appreciate all the creature comforts of home, including a welcome treat, food and water bowls, and even its own bed. Your dog will enjoy its inner city stay as much as you. For those making tracks to South Australia, we've got Dog and Me at Bridgewater. Nestled in the midst of the stunning Adelaide Hills, the pretty leafy village of Bridgewater is a pleasant retreat from the city. It's a great location with scenic walking trails and surrounded by quaint villages and historic pubs. Bring the family, friends and your pooch for an escape to the country that you'll never forget. For more pet-friendly accommodation ideas, visit takeyourpet.com.au. dogs are different and just like us humans that means they play differently as well so Joe you're going to help us determine which toy is going to meet our dog's need I hope today okay well we'll do our best anyway so Joe how do we know what kind of toy our dog is going to like well um the important thing is to think like an animal okay uh, you you've got all these various breeds now they're all um different things to turn them on mm. one is movement Yes. Colour, noise, and last of all, food. Food. I right? think that's a big one. Yeah, food is a big <laughs> one, but you want to ignore that because you don't want a fat dog. No. Right? So um, if you go down to the shop and you buy something that looks all gl glitter and glamorous and you get it home and you show it to the dog and the dog goes, nah. Mm. Right? He's interested in something he, he knows he can get food, uh, fun out of. Yeah. So with something like this then, this is the tucker ball. Yep. So this is great for dogs that like food. Yep. And also a bit of noise in there as well. That's right. It's, well, yeah, colour and it'll roll. So there's movement. Yes. And food drops out occasionally. Great bonus. Mm -hmm. But you've got a stuffy, he doesn't need food. No. All he wants is the noise and he wants to kill that. OK, yeah. <laughs> if, it's, if it makes a noise, it's alive. Yes. If it stopped making a noise, it's dead. OK. So then he's happy it walks off. All right, so, so it's about meeting their needs yeah, as well and exactly making sure right. we check them. Yeah. What about dogs? There are dogs that obviously like to chase things as well. Yep. So I know Darcy is a very big fan of this one. Yep. Um, that's obviously engaging. And the great thing about this is that it doesn't get splinters either. <laughs> that's right. You can, you can instead of using food to train your dog, you can use that. Mm. Because the dog, this is his number one toy. You can throw it. If he runs it into a fence, it'll bend, it yes. won't go down his neck That's and cost you several thousand dollars to get the bits out. Another thing that dogs like to do, obviously, is to yep. hug. Tug games. <laughs> so you, That's a fair tug. You've got hold of it, the dog's got hold of it. Mm -hmm. Now, the main, playing tug games with the dog, you've got to know when the dog is getting over the top. So you say, OK, leave it. Mm -hmm. Now, if the dog can drop it off, then that's fine. OK. But if you want, you've got to take it away, put it in your pocket and walk home. OK, all right. right. You've, you've really got to, the onus is on you, you've got to make it an enjoyable thing for the mm -hmm. dog, right? So that is probably a universal good toy because it'll float, it'll do everything a dog wants to do, yep. it'll do everything you can get fun out of, yes. and then at the end of the day, you take it home, put it on top of the fridge, and the dog will sit there watching. <laughs> watching all the time. I know yeah, Darcy yeah. does that as well. And this, yeah. <laughs> here comes Darcy. Yeah. Now, also, then there are some dogs that don't like the hard, so a soft. So this sort of taps into a few different things. It's very colourful, it's soft, it flies. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can roll it up and stick it in the pocket. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, but the other thing is, would you like to catch a dinner plate in your mouth? I don't think so. Well, you've got a hard disk. <laughs> you put a hard disk and this one together. Mm -hmm. And you throw the hard disk, the dog will catch that. Then you throw this, 
the dog will catch it. You throw the red one, it'll wait for the blue one. That's right, that'll be the favourite toy from yeah, there on in. Because it's not hard and it's nice on the gums. Great. And these ones, well, they've got a bit of everything. Yep, yeah, that's Christmas on a stick to a dog. <laughs> that is indeed. Fabulous. Well, thanks, Joe. If you'd like to check out the Aussie Dog product range, visit aussiedogs.com.au. <laughs> Thank you. We learned a lot today. Pleasure. <laughs> Aussie dog products know that all pooches like to play in their own special way. Some love to play ball, chase a frisbee or a game of tug of war. Whatever game keeps your dog happy, their interactive toy range can help keep your dog entertained and exercised. One lucky viewer is going to win an awesome prize pack of $500 worth of tailored Aussie dog products, plus an easy dog drive cover for the ultimate car seat protection. All you have to do is share your best photo of your pooch at play on Facebook. Tag the Pooches at Play and Aussie Dog Products pages and tell us in 25 words or less how your dog likes to spend its time playing or what it likes to play with. We're also giving away five daily Aussie Dog Product prize packs valued at over $35 each for 14 days, containing an Aussie Dog Get It and Catch Ball suited to your dog's size and breed. If you're not on Facebook, you can also enter via our website. So visit poochesatplay.com for full terms and conditions. Well, that's the end of another awesome day. George, I think you're due for a bath. Might try some of that Rufus and Coco stuff. Actually, Darcy, you need one too, and maybe a bit of a trim. <laughs> well, sadly, the end of this episode is also the end of our first season of Pooches at Play. But luckily, there's plenty online on our website. Check it out, poochesatplay.com. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Come on, Darcy. Come on, George. Go. Time to say goodbye. Come on. Come on. Go. Bye, time. Oh.